On August 16, 2000, a VHS tape was found in Austin, Texas by a group of six teenagers. It was discovered in a small box hidden within a dumpster. Later that day, the group of teenagers agreed to play the tape out of curiosity. The next day, they reported the tape to the police. It was confiscated by the FBI due to its shocking, gruesome content. There are no known copies of this VHS tape anywhere, nor are there any known replicas of the footage on the Internet, leading the world to not have any knowledge of its existence. Since watching the VHS tape, the six teenagers had suffered from severe night terrors, paranoia, and periods of insomnia for months. Two of them committed suicide. Three of them had been sent to therapists for treatment. The last one was committed to an asylum after having gone insane for weeks. One side of the VHS tape has a title written on it in black ink, which reads, Auburn Wolf. The footage allegedly begins with blackness and silence for 30 seconds before a still image of an unknown forest pops up in color, playing audio consisting of bird chirps, wolf howls, and other natural sounds that one would expect to hear. The forest consists of evergreen trees and small bushes with a cloudy sky shown above. This continues for approximately two minutes before another still image appears, but the audio is cut off, and the image is viewed for only three seconds. It shows a wolf snarling at something out of the camera's view. The camera briefly glitches when this image appears. Then the image disappears, and there is silence and blackness again. After 10 seconds, an image presenting white-colored words is shown, Do you fear death itself? Or the cause? You wish to run from what is trying to kill you, but what if you cannot outrun it? Are you ready to see your worst fears come to life? By this point, one of the teenagers was said to have requested that they stop watching the tape, but the others remained adamant on watching the entire footage. The words fade away, leaving a black screen. Twenty seconds later, the footage resumes with the same forest being seen, but the camera is moving as if someone were holding it. It slowly pans to the left, viewing numerous trees, until it abruptly moves back to the right in less than a second, revealing something emerging from behind a bush. A wolf is seen walking out. Its appearance is larger than that of a normal wolf, described to be about 4 feet in height and 8 feet in length, with a thick, auburn-colored coat of fur. Its claws are long and white, and its eyes are shown to have abnormal coloration. Next to it are three pups, their sizes being that of a typical house cat, containing coats of different colors, one was gray, one was white, and one was black. The pups are in poor shape, the gray pup is extremely ill, the white pup is badly deformed, and the black pup is severely injured. The camera zooms in on the pups, glitching frequently while getting a close-up view of them. Some parts of the sick pup's fur are missing, exposing black, decaying skin underneath with streams of blood flowing down their legs. The pup's eyes were described by the teenagers as unnatural and too human-like, also applying this to the larger wolf, who seems to be the parent. Seeing this in the tape, one of the teenagers was stated to have become so terrified that they vomited and left, leaving the other five to watch the rest. The deformed pup is seen with its front legs and tail missing, and its legs are bent in an unusual way that made it look less like an animal. One of its eyes is missing, and it walks around on its hind legs, similar to how a human walks, but is shown to struggle greatly with maintaining balance. The injured pup's left leg is skinned entirely, exposing muscle and bone that are slightly covered in dirt. It keeps its left leg lifted to avoid pain, but whimpers loudly. The sound's distorted and at a low pitch. The camera gains some static, causing it to lose focus and blur out, and a faint howl accompanies it in the background. As soon as one of the pups whimper, the camera pans towards the large wolf, focusing on its mouth. It appears to drool as a black liquid builds up and spills out of its mouth like a rabid animal, and its breathing becomes irregular. The wolf slowly widens its mouth exposing its large canines as well as a second row of teeth further back near its throat. Three seconds pass, and the screen is black again. It lasts for five seconds before a still image fades in with no audio, revealing that the three pups have been mutilated, their bodies torn to shreds. Several of their bones are seen on the ground, which the camera focuses on, 
showing small chunks of body tissue and fur still attached to them. The image gains a red hue, gradually, but then a second image shows up, allowing the Auburn wolf's mouth to be seen with bits of flesh and splotches of blood stuck to its lips and teeth. The camera becomes full of static for roughly a minute, accompanied by a low-pitched growl, then by demonic groaning, then by a distorted howl. After the static ceases, the camera records a girl playing in an open space within the same forest, throwing sticks and kicking leaves around. The girl is laughing as she frolics around. The camera moves to the left, showing the Auburn wolf standing behind a tree, staring intently at the girl from a distance. The camera zooms in on its face, revealing it to be salivating profusely with small amounts of blood dripping from the tip of its tongue as it pants quietly. Its body twitches frequently also as if it is losing patience and waiting to attack the girl. The wolf lifts itself up, standing on its hind legs. The video develops a red hue again, and the camera shakes slightly. The wolf begins to walk on its hind legs, gradually picking up speed as it gets closer to the girl, who is completely unaware of the wolf's presence. As it closes the distance, it stretches out its front paws. Its legs begin to extend to appear as humanoid arms. Its paws changing shape, growing in size, they grow fingers and thumbs, the claws staying at the tips of the fingers. The camera quickly loses its coloring, becoming black and white, and the quality of the video decreases, making it impossible to see the whole transformation in detail. A faint scream can be heard in the background as the wolf moves quicker. The girl is shown noticing the wolf approaching her and heard screaming in horror as she runs for her life. The wolf lets out a howl as it goes back to running on all fours. Just before the wolf reaches the girl, the camera goes static. The audio does not stop, however, allowing the girl's deafening screams to continue to be heard. They become increasingly loud through the duration of the static but come to a stop after nearly two minutes. The camera cuts to another still image, this one of a dismembered hand with a pale gray coloration. A second image fades in after five seconds showing guts lying on the ground, as well as a third image showing the wolf holding the girl's head in its mouth. A muffled, faint scream echoes. The camera cuts to black again with no more audio. When the blackness is replaced with footage again, the camera has regained its color, and it is placed in what appears to be a room with no windows dimly lit by four candles. The four walls of the room show many claw marks of various lengths. Hanging above the wolf are several short chains that dangle, creating occasional creaks. Entering from the right side of the camera's view is the Auburn wolf, and it is seen limping to the center of the room. Its appearance is drastically different from before. Its fur is stained with medium-sized patches of blood, and its back legs are bent unnaturally, appearing similar to the way human legs are bent. Its head has multiple gashes, some deeper than others, and it makes various groaning and whimpering sounds as if in distress. It proceeds to sit in the middle of the room, looking around and at itself. It lifts up its right front leg and begins to nibble on it. After five minutes of nibbling on its leg, the nibbling turns to chewing and biting. It chews and bites itself for nearly four minutes before it suddenly stops, beginning to convulse and gag, making noises that would indicate coughing. Human coughing, a music box begins to play in the background, replacing the audio. The wolf bends its back, lowering its head to the floor. Its mouth opens widely, and its body begins to convulse more. The spasms grow more severe as the wolf looks to be trying to regurgitate something out of its mouth. The camera regains a small amount of static, and the music box's notes decrease in pitch. As the regurgitating gains intensity from the aggressive convulsions, the music in the background steadily loses harmony and beat. Notes are played at random in a wide range of pitches, rapidly breaking down. The static becomes worse as the camera zooms in on the Auburn wolf slowly. The wolf turns its head to look at directly at the camera, revealing its black eyes. Its mouth opens wide for the camera, and the deformed hand of an infant is seen reaching out of its mouth. The video immediately stops at this point and the color is lost again. The music also ceases. The only audio that can be heard here after a six-second period of silence is the sound of crying, but there are two voices crying simultaneously, one of a newborn baby and another that sounds like an elderly man weeping. The sound is played for approximately three and a half minutes before it ends, and the next sound is an ear-piercing, 
childish scream that lasts for 10 seconds. Then the video cuts to black one last time, and the audio also stops playing. After 20 seconds pass, the video and audio return in unison, the color also retrieved, the static is gone. What comes next in the video is what one of the teenagers claimed to have prompted three of them to leave. The Auburn wolf is no longer gagging and convulsing, now sitting and looking down at what can only be described as a pair of humanoid infants lying on the floor, both of which are surrounded in puddles of a black liquid that seems to have come from the wolf. One of the infants is moving while the other is motionless. Both of them have umbilical cords attached to their stomachs, but the other ends of them are detached from the wolf. There is uncertainty as to whether the cords were connected to it to begin with. Suddenly, the wolf collapses to the floor, its breathing slowing down as it reaches out with a humanoid hand to stroke the unmoving baby's head. Now, let us die together. In peace. The wolf murmurs in a child's voice as it takes its final breath. One of the infants rolls around and lifts itself up with its deformed arms and legs. As it clumsily approaches the camera, dragging its umbilical cord with it, it reveals its disfigured face, which is seen lacking a nose, and already decaying, darkish gray skin, as well as its more animalistic characteristics. Its eyes are white, which is a possible indication of a major birth defect. It has patches of auburn fur on its body, but the majority of its flesh is bare, dying skin slathered in blood and saliva. It has wolf-like ears with little fur on them, as well as a small, dog-like tail. One of the teenagers who watched the last several minutes of the footage was said to have described the creature as being human, yet not. They claimed that the creature was something so unbelievably horrible and revolting that even the devil would not want to look at it. Further into the footage. The small creature stops about three feet from the camera and opens its mouth as if to speak. Help. Me. It. Hurts. Stop. It. It whimpers before it falls onto the ground and dies. Its jaw hangs, and a dark liquid flows out of its mouth. Nothing occurs for a minute. But then, a large, clawed, animalistic hand comes in from the right side of the camera's view. It grabs the dead infant by its left leg before dragging it out of the room. No later than 5 seconds, indecipherable symbols begin to fade in and out randomly for 30 seconds. Afterwards, the video meets an abrupt end with the end.